everybody, and uh, welcome back to a new season of Quick Review Thursday and a brand new episode. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody, and I'm here with... Molly presents it, otherwise known as the Moo Cow Moo. And as you notice, we're doing it through Zoom today, but most of the time we do it inside the studios if we do it together. But um, what, are you having fun just showing off your pirate guy? Yep. In the background. Did you make that? No, I found it. I looked up the image for Shitty Pirate, and this is what I oh, got. That was the Shitty Pirate? For a Shitty Pirate movie. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I, The way I kind of thought about it when I was watching it was these guys are having a lot of fun playing dress up. You know, like it, it and it came across like them having fun, you know, to me, I could feel the fun. Like I could feel that they all enjoyed their roles. And you what know, movie was one. this? I thought, you know, because uh, I loved I loved every single wacky little character in this. I mean, uh, what was the movie called? Oh, Pirates of Treasure Island. Sorry, we normally say that in the beginning. But uh, no, Pirates of Treasure Island, which is a, an asylum uh treasure island movie mixed with pirates of the caribbean that was basically what this was supposed to be mixed with master and commander mixed with starship troopers pretty much yes yes the starship troopers with the the bugs and stuff on that except a lot island. cheaper and stupider yeah it's silly silly just silly you know um directed by lee scott uh written and directed by lee scott who uh was a big part of the asylum in the beginning of their you know time but that he moved on to do his own other stuff that he did and he actually worked with our buddy jackie you know hall who's been on these shows before um in fact i let her know that we're reviewing this she had never heard of it i don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign considering she's very close friends with lee i, I had lee... never heard of it either um I, I this might be one of those ones that uh even the asylum is too embarrassed to uh put out in public no, I mean, it's on Tubi. Um, I remember it from the Blockbuster days where I would go to Blockbuster and they'd have all the Asylum movies, you know, and everything. So this I was is 2000, it. what, four, five? Six or six, 2006. 2006. Yeah. Um, uh, it was like, because I think this was like almost the end of Lee Scott's reign with, with uh, Asylum. I think 2007 was his last year or so a reign of you know. terror comes to an end yeah but uh you know once again i think everybody in this film had uh had a fun time just playing their roles there's was a blind cue for two seconds with this weird ass goggles on his face there was uh billy bones you know there's all the characters from the books except for and bonnie which was strange <laughs> You know, considering she's just a famous female pirate, but and if you look at the if you look at the Treasure Island book, I don't think there's any females in the book whatsoever. So this movie tried to be diverse. The asylum was being diverse before diversity was even a a thing. But also, it was probably go back to what you normally say is you just people just want to have hot chicks in the movies so that yeah, you know, get get the butts in the seats. Basically, I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> But uh, Rebecca Kushan, I think that's how you say her name. Um, I'm friends with her on Facebook. Um, I've known her, like I've known of her since these days. You know, she's worked on a lot of the Asylum movies. And um, I absolutely loved her. And this is Anne Bonnie. I thought she had a fun, you know, she looked like she was enjoying herself. And uh, Lance Henriksen looked like he was enjoying himself, too. Like he was like, oh, Hollywood never cast me as Long John Silver. So here you go. <laughs> you know, here's my turn. <laughs> You know, what do you think? Um, well, you got to understand, I'm, you know how Lenore would be criticizing science because that's her background. Right. Well, American history is my background, so I'm pretty much going to have the same effect because they get everything wrong. Everything is anachronistic, and it's the kind of thing that it takes you 10 seconds of just looking up on Google for you to you know, fix things. I mean, things like Anne Bonny, you mentioned her, she was a famous pirate, but she died in 1724. And they are saying they were there in 1801. And in fact, the era of pirates was like a hundred well, years before 1801. Well, considering she wasn't in Treasure Island, that was never, she was never a character that, you know, whatever, and they just placed her in there. Uh, to me, they were just, it, it was just them 
replacing a the <laughs> most famous female pirate into the movie. And, and actually, she wasn't a very good pirate either. Um, the reason she was famous is mainly for her gender. The only person she's known to have killed is a servant girl. And um, they she was captured in 1720 in Jamaica, not in the Carolinas. And um, yeah, and, and she was going to be hung, but she begged because uh, she was pregnant at the time. And um, they assume that she was killed. Nobody really knows because there's no record of it. There is no record. I looked that up. I, I looked her up on Google myself. I didn't like go into the the history like you you know of because my thing was this wasn't this was never going to be historically accurate. There was never like not uh, even it was close. all it was a fiction. It's a work of fiction. And no, but they could at least get details right. Like they, they talk have, about they President didn't... Jefferson. Pre the earliest he could be is 1801. And then they're like the Continental Congress. Well, the Continental Congress ceased existing in 8 1781. And and Tom Downey plays Andrew Jackson, you know, in the it's movie. Ridiculous. You know, so I, it's just you know, right. If you're a hist history buff and you're watching this for historical accuracies, then you're going to be pissed off. But if you're just looking at it like this is just a, a silly, goofy movie it's, that, yeah, you know, but just basic American history stuff that people should know they should have. They should not have graduated high school without learning the right things here. I just don't understand. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Uh, doesn't bother me and i'm not like going i'm not thinking like throughout the whole thing oh my god this is this is accurate oh oh man this is really cool they're getting everything no like I'm why does everything have to be wrong everything because it's a goofy silly it's movie. a cartoon it's a cartoon yes and that's fine and that's <sighs> exactly what it wants to be it wants to get the people that go watch pirates of the caribbean to rent this movie because remember this is a mockbuster this was what they did they put pirates of treasure island uh at, you know in the middle between pirates of the caribbean so people I go mean, pirates of the caribbean is crap movies too but at least they look good right this one didn't even look good this looked cheap and shitty well so so like grandma goes and buy goes to get pirates of the pirates of the caribbean accidentally picks this up brings it home to their to their grandson and their grandson's like what is this and they watch it you know that's like the plan did you, you notice know? there's like four different ships and the rigging is all wrong and just there's no consistency at all <laughs> it's just ridiculous Oh man, it feels like you wish that this was on IOC so you could rate it as stinker. Oh my but... god, yeah, I'd be all I'd be all over it. I have notes. I have an oh, entire Jesus. page of notes of all the shit Freak. that I just picked up that I was like, nope, that's wrong, that's but, wrong, that's wrong. But see, doing that is no fun when you're watching a movie like this. You know, then you're just doing homework, you know? Like this movie. Not really homework to... for me. I knew it. It's just it was like that. Right, but you're supposed to just turn sit back and, and yeah, turn off your brain and go duh and just enjoy it. It's just it, you know, to me, it was just a fun little time. Like everybody I mean, had fun, enjoyed the Bugs Bunny and the Three Stooges for that kind of stuff. Right, this is that you know. So if you don't like that or don't want to watch that kind of stuff, this isn't for you. But um, I'm saying if you're just going to go pick up a pirate movie that was made on a shoestring budget, you know, I mean, I think the most they spent on it is uh, is is Lance Hendrickson himself. Everything else, they just they put it together and they made a movie. But and at least I, they could get the story right and the details right, and even basic things like but, like when the pirates, you know, when they go off to to get the treasure, and then the pirates cut their way out of, out of the rope. Why didn't they just disarm the pirates? That's like the basic thing. How dumb could you be? I mean, sure. <laughs> because, but the, then, because the script demands that they get free. That's why. Yeah, they have to get free somehow, and they have to have their weapons, and they have to have, you know, whatever. I mean, I those little things, like, yeah, cartoon. I think very silly and goofy, and I, you know, uh, me, personally, I could watch this movie, like, over and over again and be fine with it. And not have to, you know, not have to be like, oh, my God, 
there's something wrong. There's another something wrong because I just don't care. And if even there the not. shitty bug things would have been more fun if there had been more of them. They end up fighting two at the end, and they don't look anything like the giant ones that they tease you with in the beginning. I guess because it would cost too much money to make even bigger ones or something all the time. Well, also because then the bigger see the bigger ones took off uh, his leg or whatever. That's why he had a, a peg leg. You know, or whatever, one legged guy. And that's. You didn't kind see of, that, of course. Uh, you didn't see that. Well, you saw that coming at him or whatever. And then they cut to the, the credits. Um, I did like that they. Uh, so in the book, they don't. They only talk about what happened before. They don't, you know, they don't. It doesn't actually go into the story of what happened. You know, just it's just told, you know, uh, later in the story of, of what happened. And then in this movie, it actually shows you the beginning. So, so it's almost like a prequel to Treasure Island. What happened before, you know, um, with the first group of people looking for the treasure that, you know, Cap Captain John uh, Silver was on. I, I, Long John, Long John Silver, you know, which always, always makes me laugh just hearing that because I just think of the restaurant. I, I can't. Well, I can't the interesting thing to me is that um, a lot, I noticed a couple of people, a couple of actors, I guess because they're the asylum crew, but they were in that other pirate movie that we did. Jolly Roger, yeah. Jolly Roger. Uh, Tom Nagel, yeah. Tom Nagel. Was Which, there. yeah. And I'm like, now that I look back at it, that was a much better movie than this. <laughs> <laughs> much better. Um, I think back then, and, and even then, that was really goofy, but they weren't, I don't think they needed to get accuracies because that was a made up pirate and a made up story that they right. came up with themselves when they when they're doing stuff like you know this where it's just uh and taking this core story and then just doing your own version the of it acting was all bad and i didn't believe a single person they all had terrible accents their line deliveries were suspect it felt so, like like a cosplay group getting together. And I mean, even room. Lance Henriksen had like an Irish accent and called everybody la the girl lass, you know, and stuff like that. Well, everybody and I'm just, each other lass. Yeah, and it was it was sort of weird because I'm like, none of these were like these were English, you know. Why did they do English accents? You know, maybe because Lance Henriksen could perfect an uh, an Irish accent the best. Um, maybe the French guy was the worst. That was the worst Smollett. Q accent I've ever heard in my life. You know, yeah, Captain Smollett. You know, I I don't know. I liked him. I thought he was fun. Um, he like I said, they all looked like they were enjoying themselves, which you know, and the characters that they were. I'm playing. sure they were. I, I just know. wished that I had had some fun with them. I, I had and you know, and that was funny it. because I did because of that. I don't know. It just was the, the infection I get while watching some people make a movie. This is the same thing as I get when I can watch a Mark Polonia movie. I just enjoy. It's about I, that level. You know, and, yeah. What I, it's, it's what I enjoy with people doing like basically backyard filmmaking, except in this case, their backyard was a huge ass island that they shot on. I'm pretty sure. They How the hell did they get Lance Hendrickson? Was he like down and out or something? I mean, I guarantee you, they said, uh, they said we have the money for you, uh, and you get to play Captain uh, Long John Silver. And he said, "Sign me up," because I would. Oh, it's like Gary Busey wanted to play a fucking cookie, you know? Like, yeah, well, but Lance know. Hendrickson's a real actor. I mean, you yeah. Know. Could you imagine Gary Busey in that role as Long John Silver? That, that would have worked. Funny. That well, would have been fun. There would have been fun. But yeah, it was, I, I think it he was, would have just made it even kookier. I think it would have. It just. I just felt bad for Lance Hendrickson. It just. It would just seem sad. I don't know? know. I didn't. I didn't feel bad. He's been so much better films. I thought he had. He enjoyed himself, and you know, I don't know. I had. A, I enjoyed myself. You know, watching it. I can't. I can't, you know, like, once again, I don't care about historical accuracies in a movie like this. If it were like a Hollywood big time budget, you know, movie that, you know, they have, you know, I guarantee you this was something that was made, written in like a couple days. They just had enough to, you know, they were just like, let's get a pirate movie done. Lee, write a script. Let's make it. And he did. And you know what? We got we got this, and I enjoyed that. that 
<laughs> that that was fun for me you know right because oh. you know um i i just you know i just had a good time so i don't know i'm sorry you didn't but i had a feeling you wouldn't i'm glad you, you had gonna... a good time i just uh yeah i wish i could have shared it 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 was painful to me it was just maddening and irritating and just it's like if I'm going to write a, a movie in five days, I would at least take the, the the time to at least make things right, even if it's a cartoon. I mean, I would make an effort. I really would. I mean, I don't know. I, have you seen most of the Asylum movies? They, they, they yes, don't really they try to make the effort because they're really just trying to get it out there. You know, I, I, I they're, they're more about that. quantity than quality. And that's not saying knocking them or anything, because look, I would love to have the budget I mean, that they have. They, they know what they do. they know what they do. Yeah, they know. Um, they're not and, under any illusions that they make really good. They're, they 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 know that they are not full moon. Full moon would not make a movie like this. Full moon well, would make a much better film. Even full though moon budget. would have made it really silly, or you know, if they're going to go that route. You know, they wouldn't have none of it would have been serious at all. Like it just would have been the silly, you know, silly. Shit, even if they did all puppets, it would have been more fun. Well, I don't know. I I enjoyed. It. I liked the acting. I enjoyed the. I mean, the the bad acting because I I like. I agree, but it was just it made it it made it feel like a bunch of friends going out and making a movie. And a lot of these people have worked together before, not just on that Jolly Roger, but on other projects and. Um, I even heard it was weird because like there was an actress named Eliza Swenson that worked with them and they mentioned Eliza Scott. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I think uh, I think uh, they might have might have been dating at the time or something. I don't know. But uh, I just thought that was an interesting little nod. They have little in jokes to the to the stuff. And uh, me personally, I just feel like the. um I don't know. The the asylum made a fun little movie, you know. And God, I hope me. Lance Hendrickson. This was like his first and only dive into the asylum. I hope he's I don't think it better. is. I don't oh know. God! I think he's done others. I don't know if they're they're like this, you know, or whatnot. But I think he I think he's done others. Um, I mean, they have they. That's the one thing they were really good at doing, especially before, and they still do. But they were good at getting like one big you know, star or whatever. Like they got Lance Hendrickson. They were, if it had been, you know, Tiffany and uh, Debbie Gibson playing the pirate chicks, that would have been fun. That they, been they fun. didn't think about Te uh, Debbie and Tiffany for a while, but they had like Bruce Boxleitner. They've had um, Steve Rails back. They've had a lot of like, you know, sort of big name actors, you know, that have, you On know, the tail ends of their career. Most sort likely. of, Sort of where they would just sort of like, you know, you pay me 20 grand, I'll do your movie, you know, and and then you do it. And then they come, they do the best job yeah, that they can. I mean, and then if this had had a more Sharknado feel to it, I think I would have enjoyed it more. I would have forgiven a lot more of this stuff, but mm -hmm. I don't think they were going for that. I think they were trying to make an actual real fantasy pirate movie. Right. Like Feeling this miserable. is not Sharknado. This was not that kind of cartoon. It was not Mega Shark versus Crocosaurus. This was, this was. Right. Those you are know, fun. They're not so. They're not. Yeah, great you still, either, you still like. We we, we reviewed their stuff, and you're just like always on. Nobody in the military does that, and I'm like, it's a fucking asylum movie. Nobody in the military in the asylum movies does anything right. They just, you know, try to make it make sense, you know, and that's it. And that's what they did with this movie, you know, so no, they failed. No, <laughs> it made sense to me. The whole movie made sense. Yeah. It, it worked. It had a beginning, a middle and an end. And I was enthralled by the whole thing. I was down. I had the not... girls were cute. I, that's about as much as I can say. Um, it, it, It's a movie I haven't seen for a while. And I remember the first time, like I said, finding it on at a uh, blockbuster and and going, I, I think I was interviewing Lee and stuff at the time. And I was just like, I want to, you know, like I want to chat with these guys about how they made these movies and stuff. You know, I mean, interesting shit. 
by the yeah. skin of their teeth, apparently. No, I enjoyed it. Um, sorry you didn't. I think other people would enjoy it if they just like don't think of it that way. But there, I mean, a lot of the reviews were pretty much what you were saying. You know, like one star, one and a half star because of the, you know, of the inaccuracies and all those other shit. But to me, that just doesn't that doesn't matter. And, and even that, I would be happy with, except it's just it's missing the charm of say an Ed Wood or you know one of the classic stinky movie directors who thinks they're making something better than what they're actually making. I, these guys didn't think that they were making something better. They pretty much knew they were making a cheap movie. Right, and they were just trying to make a cheap movie that was fun to them, you know, and it was fun to me. So I'm sorry it wasn't fun to you, but uh, you know it happens. We we get that a lot, you know. Um, especially our tastes are different. You know, I kind of, I grew up in a different time period, you know, than you anyway, to a different generation. I'm and... just thankful there wasn't a single teenager in there that I had to worry about and some high school morons. No, they're all adults. Um, in fact, uh, that was one of the inaccuracies from the, uh, the, was it from the uh, novel the book. novel? Yeah. Jim Hawkins is a young kid you know, who goes on this, you know, fire adventure. Uh, they they were like, I'm sorry, Tom Nagel, who I've met and I love and I've interviewed. He's a really great guy, but he's not a kid. You know, he's he and he didn't he didn't try to play one. So it wasn't a 25 year old playing a 17 year old, you know, or whatever. It was a uh, I think 28 year old playing a 28 year old. Well, in the book, I they mean, don't have giant bugs. Maybe, either, so. maybe less. Yeah, I I don't know. I enjoyed I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that aspect of it. That's the asylum, you know. That was that was what they brought to it because they wanted to put this on the Sci Fi Channel, and mm. this was on the Sci Fi Channel, which makes no sense because it's not a Sci Fi type right. of movie. But yeah, that makes they, sense. They Although put, there was back, I think it was the late seventies or early eighties. There was a um, Treasure Island in Space movie. Nice. That's what it was called, Treasure Island in Space really bad like bad 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 is that ifc bad kind of thing could you get yes. that at some point okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah right, we'll yeah. have to watch that um i worse than this i <laughs> worse than this that's i mean consider you're just not knocking on this i don't well, know that had that actually had like a budget like a like a 40 or 50 million dollar budget oh wow yeah this this i don't even think it had more than i don't think it even had a hundred thousand <laughs> no I think, mean, like I said, I think the most that they spent on this movie was was Lance Henriksen, and the rest was just let's put everything together. I liked Red Giles in it. He played Wilkins, the the guy who had to come yeah, on. Yeah, he was and good. Run. And but he's always good in everything. He played the pirate in Jolly Roger. He's like know? the one guy I was rooting for. <laughs> and he made it, I believe. Well, the they all did. The yeah. Everybody who got shot pretty much made it. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because like. What Even Anne Bonnie, she gets her shirt shot off of her, and uh, yeah, no big deal. She's out. No big deal. Yeah, and 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 her. and was a Jim Hawkins got shot, and he was like, "Oh, that's just a flesh wound," <laughs> you know. So I mean, I was like, "Oh shit." Um, I don't know. I there were some goofy lines. I I felt like they really had a lot of fun giving. Um, Prepare for an ambush. Yeah. How exactly do you do that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, and I like the I like the shooting the uh what is it, the the cannon shooting the 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 big bug with the cannon and then blowing it up at one point and I was like yes you know it was cool I don't and know I have fun. poor Yi she's she's trying to cut the girls loose and she's using the back end of the knife instead of the sharp end of the knife I'm like really you couldn't do another take with the right side that's just sloppy sloppy maybe that's what they wanted that's what they asked her to do unlikely <laughs> who knows anyway i enjoyed it i had a great time uh watching it um and uh i will watch it over and over again but i'm glad i picked it for quick review thursday and not for indie film cafe because i i think there's other asylum movies we could do on indie film well cafe. who would you have who would you have picked because we would have had a third person for this um, would you, you say know, it for I, someone like Kim or if I could have picked somebody, it would have been Jesse Green. Oh, 
you know he's a pirate you know yeah. or chris obraki who's a merman you know like we could have had a merman talk about pirate stuff i don't know but we didn't we had us two for quick review thursday so uh i want to say thank you guys um next uh next up the next one will be paul's pick um i think we might be back in the studio for that i'm not sure and we usually do things faster but we argued a lot on this one yeah this well you know and that's another thing why i thought this would have been an ifc is because you know this probably would have gone longer than 10 minutes or 15 minutes or something generally speaking when we're on zoom it goes longer yeah well and again i had this big long list of stuff that uh you know there's no point in touching on it now but i kind of forgot that this was a quick review and not ifc because Calbrain. yeah why did you think it was ifc if it was just going to be you and me uh i don't know cow brain <laughs> you know how i am all Wait, right 50. yeah uh, i'm already sort of there my brain's not not really the greatest but it's not been the greatest forever for so i don't know you know i just wasn't built with a great brain um but anyway, everybody, thank you guys for checking this out. Uh, join us, I think, in two weeks. Uh, we'll do, you will have uh, Paul's episode up, and um, don't know what he's gonna pick, but it's usually something. I he got just, no idea. He just picks it randomly <laughs> and just says, "Hey, yeah. uh, let's watch this," and you know, something he's never seen before. Well, it it depends if we're in the studio or if we're doing something like Zoom here. You know, there there are things I pick up, especially from the Dollar Tree during our hauls. I don't know what the hell it is, and I generally don't have time to watch it. So I'm like, well, let's just throw this in quick review and uh, see how it is. But if it's you know through uh, if it's through Zoom, do you or so you just find something on Tubi? Yeah, but... I just look around for something, whatever catches my interest. If, if it's something I've seen before, then that's cool. If it's not, maybe... yeah, that's the thing with quick review Thursday. It can be something we've seen before, and sometimes it is, you know, and stuff. It doesn't yeah, have to be. I brand don't like new. to do things on IFC that I don't know anything about, or I I am in the dark about. I know? do. I sort of do. I don't know. That's sometimes fun. You know, because it's like an adventure. We have no idea what we're gonna, you know, what we're gonna be in. And yeah, I, I because you never know. You might pick one that's just blah. And well, sometimes some, you do. Sometimes yeah, I right. picked ones and you picked ones that I think were kind of blah. You know, so I don't know. You never know. But uh, I bet if you look in our thing, I don't have a whole lot of fives. Yeah, that's true. All right, everybody. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, join us in two weeks for a brand new episode of Quick Review Thursday. Until Get to then, hear us argue again. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>